Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me here at the conference. Great to see so many of you. Today, I want to introduce you to the Centi Franc, the Swiss franc stablecoin that is fully backed by Swiss Bank Guarantee. But I also want to uh, tell you a little bit about the history of why we got there and why we even issue the stablecoin. So we see Centi, including the Centi Franc, as the Swiss pocket knife of payments for global applications. So in a nutshell, what we do is, and what we founded the company to do is, save merchants and consumers millions and billions of dollars or euros or Swiss francs. I want to tell you how we do that. And we can offer payment fees in real-time payments where you would typically use your credit card 90% cheaper, even 99% cheaper for micropayments. I would argue that's even an understatement because for certain micropayments you will actually pay on top if a credit card is used. Let's say you would invoice 20 cents. Now, when we founded Genty in 2020, we started building our backend. The backend does a lot of things, um, but mainly it can create invoices on behalf of our merchants and it can process payments for those merchants and check them and validate them and then accept them. And on this backend, we have built a consumer app which connects to it, which you can all download, and I would ask you to do so. If you want to try Chenti, just go to chenti.ch slash app, and you will find the right version for you. And your feedback is much appreciated. And on the merchant side, we've built an entire portal for the merchants. It has a dashboard. It has, um, of course, the wallet and the history. And they can define products, cashiers, um, and issue tokens as well. Let's say they want to use our ticketing solution and so on. But we can't go into all the detail because we want to talk about the stablecoin. So we've built Chenti on the BSV technology because we know it works, it scales, and it's really useful for payments. However, people like maybe my brother or my mother, they don't really care about Bitcoin, and especially the volatility is an issue. People think when they do consumer choices, they think in dollars, in euros, Swiss francs, yen, whatever. Not even hardcore Bitcoiners really think in Bitcoin. They wake up every morning and check how many dollars are my Bitcoins worth. So Bitcoin and other native cryptocurrencies aren't going to be used in the, in, you know, sort of mass adoption consumer payments for the next five to seven years. That's just my assessment. We're not there yet. Which is why at Chenti, to really extract all the value of the system we have built, we needed to issue a stable coin. And we start with the Swiss franc, which is the Chenti franc. We have plans for more stable coins, but since we're starting out of Switzerland, that's of course the natural step. And now to this entire ecosystem, we have on and off ramps. And we have credit card, for example, we have bank on-ramp, and especially proud we are of our solution to use cash as on-ramp at the Swiss post office. So for users in Switzerland, they can just top up their Chenti app using cash at the Swiss post office. Now, the problem in today's payment world is depicted here. We have very indirect payments. It's mediated payments going through various hands, um, there can be up to five to six parties involved when you tap your credit card somewhere in order to actually make that payment happen. And all these parties, of course, want a piece of the transaction. And on the left side here, you see sort of a typical transaction fee breakdown for a credit card transaction. However, this doesn't show the full picture yet for the merchant, because these are only his direct costs. There's a lot of indirect costs associated to accepting credit card transactions, such as handling disputes, fraud, and so on, which aren't depicted here. And um, if you look, of course, at micropayments or smaller payments, this effect just gets more and more and more, especially since there is usually a base fee on each transaction. This is the transaction fee pain curve, as we call it. It's based on a real sample we received um, from a payment services provider of 290,000 transactions. And 
about a third of all transactions can be considered microtransactions or small transactions. So $5 or below, just before here, I bought a croissant this morning and I tapped my credit card to buy a single croissant. And uh, you see the, the pain curve, the smaller the transaction, the higher the pain. This is how it works today. Whenever you tap a card, it's either a debit or credit transaction and it goes through these ways. So you're never paying the merchant directly. You're always promising a partner of the merchant called the acquirer that you know, your credit card issuer is gonna give them the money later. And in all of this, there's scheme fees involved. And the technology that we use today to pay on the internet is actually from the 60s and has been patched various times in order for, to make it work in today's role of the internet. That's why you might see those CVV codes you have to enter, you have to enter your zip code, your name, you might have to confirm on an app using 3D Secure. And these are all kind of patches to make this technology work for the internet. It's not native. The uh, consumer, real-time consumer payments market uh, turns around about, you know, almost 7 trillion today. And um, it's supposed to grow and double within five years. I mean, COVID was, of course, a huge accelerator of home shopping and, and internet ordering, apart from what was already there before. And we argue that micropayments and small payments will even outgrow this growth. Because today, we actually have a lot of businesses that might like to consider micropayments use cases, like you know, selling a single blog post, an article, uh, we heard this morning about uh, NFTs, content creators, and so on. And you know, not every such content has to go, you know, change hands for, for millions and billions. You might you know, want to sell micro-licenses to access something. And that's just really not feasible today. And this is our solution. So we call this the Chenti payment ecosystem. And in this case, shown with the Chenti Frank stablecoin, and I'll talk a bit about the stablecoin now. So each holder of the stablecoin, so this might be you or you, has a claim against Chenti, a claim of one franc for, you know, sort of one franc stablecoin. But, you know, what guarantees do you have? We are a startup. Um, and there is a lot of discussions around stablecoins, like how stable are they, you know, where are the reserves, what guarantees do I have? In our case, you get a Swiss bank that guarantees that in case of a default of our company, you will still get your money. And this is why we argue this is kind of a new category of stable coin that isn't just called fiat backed, it's fiat guaranteed. So it's not us telling you we have the reserves or here, you know, here's our transparency report or whatever. You actually know that a bank stands behind it with all their risk management and all their risk averseness that they have. And once you are you know, on this stable coin, you can of course freely transact with third parties, with anyone. And what we provide for you as a consumer is our Chenti app, which is a user interface to your own wallet, which you can choose to use. And what we provide for merchants is our Chenti portal and all the integrations that we offer. Uh, but, you know, we're not standing in the middle of the transaction. We're a side body helping on this side or this side, and, you know, you could exchange us on either side. But when the transaction happens, and that's what's really new in sort of electronic payments today, is it is direct. This has a lot of compliance advantages as well that I will not go into today. So what's different? Why issue another stable coin? First of all, bank guarantee. Second of all, it's suitable for micropayments. If you look at the stable coins that are out there today, they're usually issued and made for arbitrage trading. So big traders that want to move money between crypto exchanges efficiently. They don't care that their ERC20 transaction costs $3.20 or maybe $5 today. Um, but for any sort of real payment application, this matters a lot and this would not work. And it's also, as far as we're concerned, the first direct-to-consumer stablecoin. So you don't need to go through an exchange or you know, bring us 200 million uh, to get this stablecoin directly from us. You can buy it directly from us in the app, and you can also return it directly for, to us 
if you like. Of course, it's made for payments, so we prefer you use it for payments, but you can come to us anytime and we will exchange it for money on your bank account. So, you know, we can't attack these big payment companies that we have in the market today. By the way, I didn't show this, but if you look at uh, reports from Visa, Visa has a profit margin of 70%, 7 zero. Most merchants that maybe own a cafe, own an electronic store, own an online shopping, whatever opportunity, they struggle to get into two digits profit margins. And of course, we're paying all that. We're paying all that in our product prices. The, the card industry is very clever at making you think everything is for free. My card is for free, you know, everything's for free. But that's just not true. You're paying it in your product prices. But we can't directly, you know, replace those companies today. They built them for years and years and done a great job. We have to find our market niches and go in there. And that's clearly micropayments. Um, that's payments, you know, direct access payments to content, media, streaming. There are certain troubled industries that constantly have issues um, to actually find credit card acquirers. If you, for example, look at the terms of Stripe, a lot of business types are just excluded per default. And also on the consumer side, the Chenti app doesn't need your full KYC data. We can operate within certain limits. This gives access to unbanked and underbanked people to actually go and do purchases on the internet to actually participate in e-commerce because more and more of the business is moving to e-commerce. Now, this is our great team. We have um, the executive team we have involved, but I need to use the remaining three minutes we have uh, for two announcements that I want to make today. The first announcement is that we've just put online on our website, chenti.ch, under the consumer section, a section called Shopping with Chenti. And there you can find the first, I think, 125 merchants, primarily in Switzerland, but they also ship uh, Europe-wide, some of them, that accept Chenti. So now you can go to these merchants and spend your BSV or spend your Chenti stablecoin doesn't matter which one you want to spend, it's all in the same invoice you choose on your app. And actually directly pay these merchants. No gift cards in between, no nothing. You can spend directly your Bitcoins there. The second announcement I want to make is that we at Chenti have partnered with Sendbee, which you might also know from presentations here, a great startup from South Africa, to provide remittance services from Switzerland to Sub-Saharan Africa. Switzerland is the source of 35 billion US dollars of remittance payments yearly, three times more than the entire UK. And a lot of that money is going to Sub-Saharan Africa, with a lot of immigrants from there, and sometimes also refugees. And the press announcement about this will be out tomorrow. So please download our app, check our website, and find me, and um, we have also various other business offerings than what I was able to present to you today. Um, but this is what I wanted to tell you today. Thank you very much. <laughs>